Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Spotlight Over the City. I am your host, Stan Long, along with the lovely Terry T. Bomb Long. Give it up, give it up, give it up. Let's do it, let's do it. We got an amazing show, you guys. Thank you guys for tuning in to Spotlight, man. We got an amazing show for you guys this week. As usual, we say it every week because we mean it every week. Thank you guys for tuning in. The whole DMV, everybody at the sound of my voice, we appreciate you guys. Love you much. ATL, Chicago, Philly, all of you guys, especially Fayetteville. They say don't leave out Fayetteville this week. Thank you guys from Fayetteville, Charlotte, North Carolina, the whole gang. Gang, gang, we appreciate gang, you gang. guys. Spotlight over the city. We, 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 we got a lot to talk about. A lot going on in the news. Oh, my. As we already know, man, we got a lot of things moving in the city and around the city and outside of the city. Our people are on the move. Thank God for that. Thank God yes. for these young people out here pounding the curb, making a difference. And um, thank God for everybody at the sound of my voice that actually knows that Black Lives Matter. How about that? That's right, y'all. Um, we're going we're gonna to dedicate this show to everyone out there that has a change of heart that's really trying to see things move forward and get something new popping this year and, and beyond. So congratulations to everybody that's a part of the movement. We appreciate the movement, and we're going to be a part of it at Spotlight Oda City. That's what we do. So That's let's right. talk about that it a is bit. What, what we got we this week, wifey? What we got this week, we got a lit show for you this week, as we do per you as per usual. usual. We have got filmmaker who is also family to us. Mr. Anthony Commodore is going to be joining us at the 7.30 hour to talk about some of these film projects he's got coming up and some opportunities in the film industry that, you know, you may not even know about. We've also got an amazing, lovely author, Kenyatta Gray. Um, we met her, I believe, at the DMV Film and TV Summit. Lovely woman. And she's got a, about three books out. We're going to talk about one of them tonight. We've got Spotlight family member, a legendary Spotlight family member, Marvelous Beats, is going to be in the building tonight. Well, yeah, not, not one of my technically favorites. in the building, but he is a hip-hop violinist, composer, and he is one of the best to ever do it, y'all. He is so bomb, and he's been on the show before, so we are welcoming him back. And last but not least, closing out the show with a live virtual performance is recording artist, he writes songs uh, and also produces John Bibbs, you guys. I cannot wait. We have got a lit show lined up for you tonight. We do, we do, we do. Yes, we do. do. Special shout out to Urban Style Media. That's the family. That's the yes. clip gang, gang, Urban Style. 
Uh, that's who brings us the show every week. That's the studio, and that's the fam. So we appreciate everybody, all the engineers and everybody that makes us look super fly, super ready. Yes, we do. Um, before we get into the show today, we've got our usual spotlight news and sponsored by none other than Umbrella Therapeutic Services. Umbrella. Ella, Ella. Spotlight News is sponsored by Umbrella Therapeutic Services, who is D.C.'s most reliable and trusted behavioral health organization. Umbrella provides community support, medication management, therapy for individuals and groups. Any D.C. resident, ages five and up, eligible for their services. So if you live in D.C., you're age five and up, you're eligible for their services. You can contact them at 1-888-793-4357. They accept Medicaid, Medicare, and also private health insurance plans. So make sure you contact Umbrella Therapeutic Services, 1-888-793-4357. And we always like to say, do not be afraid of uh, getting a mental checkup is what we like to tell you. Your car gets tuned up. Um, a lot of other things should get tuned up, and so should your body, and so should your mind. That's so right. So if you need a mental tune-up, don't feel like you're alone. We all do sometimes, so make sure you call that number and go get yourself together. That's right. Um, let's see. What we got? Oh, hey, two chains. Two chains. You got to get some money out the bank or something, because he's being sued by Pablo Escobar's family for $10 million for violating federal law due to using Escobar's name without authorization. So 2 Chainz got these uh, restaurants in Atlanta called Escobar Restaurant and Tapas, and he's using the Escobar name allegedly to boost his revenue. Um, yeah, I don't know if you can do that because the Escobars yeah. say, you know, you can't, and they're suing him for $10 million. He's even got um, an item on his menu called the Escobar Crab Cakes, and he's got a picture up in the restaurant of Escobar. So one would think he is using that name to boost yeah. his revenue, and they said, "No, you're not. Ten million is what they're suing him for." So That's two chains, you better get your I don't like together. That. I don't like it. I don't you don't like, like that they're suing him, or you don't like that he got like two that restaurants using. Oh, okay. I don't like that they're suing him for it. I don't like it, but I mean, I can understand it. But I yeah. like it. I understand it. Then they may have a lawsuit. I don't know, but um, yeah. Yeah. I'm well, that's what's going on down there in Atlanta. And two chains. Black lives matter. Black lives matter updates. You know. That's all that's really been going on in the news these, these days, right? So we've got some updates for you on a lot of things that are kind of like really, really, really um, not, not, not so good. But the great thing is, like Stan told y'all last week, things are turning. Right? Oh, of course. Things are turning. I'm seeing a turn. It's not going to be an um, easy turn. Like, you know, you know, Pharaoh kept his neck, his foot on the neck for a little while. It wasn't just a quick turn, but it's going to turn. It it's is turning. turning. And you know why? There's no because stopping I can see turn. things happening. Juneteenth is being celebrated now. So guess what? Guess who's off tomorrow? A paid holiday. My amazing law firm has designated Juneteenth as a paid holiday for all of us. And many, many corporations are following suit. Many people are doing that. So kudos to you all who are recognizing Juneteenth as a paid national holiday. I have mad respect for that. I do. On Juneteenth? As it should be. I mean, I think it's a great thing. Of course, the slaves were literally freed up uh, that at that time, it, well, they got the message that yeah. they had been uh, freed up finally, and um, late but never. June nineteenth, right? June nineteenth, yeah, yeah. 1865. It was a long time ago, long, yeah. long, long time ago. But we hadn't really, as a community, embraced it for whatever reason because we're too busy celebrating the Fourth of July and other people's holidays, and that's how we do. Yeah. And so now we're getting more aware because God is making us aware, and you can't stop it. I know you're wondering what is going on with them people. Hey, man, it's, it's unbelievable, but it's our time, and I just thank God for that. So I'm excited. It's yeah. a great time. Me too. You know, I am too. I, I'm great excited time. until great I see time. some great things time. like this. Arthur Ashe's monument in Richmond, Virginia, was vandalized this week and sprayed White Lives Matter all over it. So they, they went over, <laughs> y'all see that shit? Y'all, uh, they went over top of it and put White Lives Matter all over Arthur Ashe's uh, monument in Richmond. Like, really, y'all? Yeah, for real? I'm cool with that's it. That's what we doing, but you know hey, what? Hey man, all of that's cool. Let it keep on coming out. All of that's going to simmer on down. Just bring it all the way on now. You got to remember something. It's been 400 years of this oppression in yeah. the, in the Americas. 400, y'all. And so don't think back to Rodney King. Boy, y'all, keep on going. 400. Go back to the hangings and all of that. So when you look at that type of oppression, right? When you look at that type of oppression, and then you say, well, uh. They trying to have their way. Black lives matter, black lives, and this and that. 
Well, these are people who are accustomed to what we call uh, 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 white supremacy. See, America is not just suffering from police brutality. That's just a starter point. The whole basis is white supremacy. That's mm. what America has been based on, white supremacy. So you have these white supremacists that are saying, I don't want to let go. I just don't. I don't want to let go. I'm feeling away, and I'm going to hold on to the wheels fall off. I'm going to ride this thing out. Yeah. And so you're not going to be able to because guess what? The wheels fell off. And so your ride is over. And that's just what it is. Sorry. It doesn't Sorry. mean you can't still win. It doesn't mean you can't be inclusive. It doesn't mean that you're going to be excluded. It just means that we're included now. And we're going to have our peace. Hopefully the whole pie and stop acting like we need a peace. I, don't want, the, I right. want recipes. That's right. We need recipes. Listen, we said things are changing. Things are changing. Ain't your mama done got canceled, <laughs> y'all. Well, 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 wait, though. See, now, let's be clear on that. Because be I heard this morning that it's not a cancellation. They're revamping the brand. And so they're going to get rid of the Aunt your Mama face. Okay, mm -hmm. so. And, and do a whole new makeover is so, what I'm thinking. Okay, I'm hoping, so why don't y'all, somebody, somebody tell me. Somebody hit me up in the, in the spotlight I, I, I don't thing. need you to get rid of the mix. I need you to get rid of the figure. So this is where I think we, we are failing as, as blacks in America. I don't think that we should be concerned about things like pulling down a Confederate flag. We need to be concerned about the mindset that wanted you to have a Confederate flag as symbolic, mm -hmm. like something historic for you to make you feel like a hero because it, it, it didn't benefit us. You know, it, it wasn't a good look. And so all I'm trying to say to you is, I don't, I don't want to get too far. Yeah. I'm going to leave that alone because <laughs> I, I don't want to get mad it's too early. Let's okay, go. Okay, let's go. A car plowed through protesters in Hollywood. I just wanted you all to see this quick clip. Just to show you how mean and hateful people are with all of this stuff going on. Yeah, gotta, man. I just want y'all to see. They fighting, right? They saying 400 years is a long time to, to just, you know, let it go. Okay, so we don't let have it go that fast. We, we had a clip. Okay. All right, well, we had a clip, but we lost a <laughs> clip. We'll get a clip back. So, all right. So the okay. clip would have showed that the person was plowing into these people. Uh, they was in a white vehicle. Yeah. Now he was a white person. Yeah. And they pulled up really fast and then hit the brake and slowed down and hit a pedestrian or a person that was protesting and then hit the gas a little bit. And, you know, and they could have really hurt that person really, really bad if they wouldn't have put on the brakes. Yeah. And they kind of let it go. And, you know, it wasn't a lot of protesters out there, but they did do that. And another car also did they the did. same similar I'm incident. Like, what is wrong with and um, it was just one of those situations where I, it looked like people were saying, I'm sick of this. You're blocking traffic. I'm trying to be somewhere. And I don't have time for this Black Lives Matter foolishness. Yeah. That's what it looked like. And yeah. so that's people who don't have a heart for what's going on, have no understanding, don't care. A lot of people not going to care. If you was a KKK member in America, which a lot of police officers have been, if you were one of these people or the mentality of a KKK member, why would you think to have any mercy, sympathy, or anything for any of these people marching in the streets? No, of course you wouldn't. And so this is what you're seeing. Yeah. You're seeing people who really have a heart for opposite of God. They're really evil. And this is what they do. And so this is not going to stop today, but we have to keep pressing and we have to deal with those people the way they should be dealt with. I agree. That's right, baby. Um, I say this news article for last because I knew that it was going to be like mm, Rayshard Brooks. Yeah. Um, we last, watched the whole entire clip. Last week. And man. Um, he was murdered at the in the parking lot at the Wendy's in Atlanta. Um, he, uh, Officer Garrett Roth has been charged with murder and should face the death penalty. He could face it and he should face the death penalty. But get this, you all, Officer Brosnan has agreed to be state's witness against the fellow officer. So let me just tell you who's who. The one here uh, on the, I don't know how it looks on y'all screen, but the bald-headed one is the one. He's That's the murderer. The one. This is That's the murderer. The murderer. And if you watch the full, it's about 50 minutes. It's on our Spotlight Facebook. It's on my personal Facebook page because it just, it devastated me last night. I took the time and I watched him to the moment they killed him dead. And it is disgusting. It is despicable. And I never wish death on people. Y'all know that. But this guy here. <laughs>
You gonna let him rock? I don't give a damn. He get he should get what he get whatever he gets. I wish somebody would have been in the parking lot that night to get his ass. That way he wouldn't even have to wait and go through the pool. <laughs> I wish that would have happened. Yeah. And I'm just so I be wondering real. about that. Where my where my bangers at? Where the where the where the Crips Bloods, Vice Lords, GDs, you know, Gorilla Family. Where my where my gang bangers at? We bang hard at each other. I don't have no were, problem. Nobody was in the windy. It don't take nothing but an ounce that, of reefer. That, that, that could help. That could <laughs> I could owe you for an ounce of weed and you gonna come out with an AR. Right? Huh? Listen. You got the clip? All right, we we, we discovered us a clip, y'all. You know oh, what? Oh, I told y'all engineers bad, man. We didn't came up with the clip, so we'll be right back. Spotlight. Had too much to drink to be driving. Put your hands on your back for me. Here, put your hands on your back. Hey, hey, stop fighting. Stop fighting. Stop fighting. Stop fighting. You're gonna get tased! You're gonna get tased! Stop. You're gonna get tased! Stop! Stop! You're gonna get tased! Hey! Hands off the fucking taser! Stop! 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 Yeah, we back spotlight. So, in my opinion, this that George Floyd just ended up in. Yep. This young man seemed to see something in these police officers that we wasn't there to witness. Because picture an officer politely talking to you for about 15 minutes. Another goofy comes up, KKK member comes up, and he starts looking at you crazy. He asks the officer a few questions. And the next thing you know, he's in your face asking the same questions over, over and over and over and over. And, over. and now it turns into harassment because I'm answering you. I've moved the car. I've explained it to you. And now I'm answering every one of your dumbass questions over and over. So now you give me the test to see if I'm so sober. Now I got to pass the sobriety test. I did that. Now you want my feet in the air. You say count to 1,000 this. One thousand. did, I did that. that. Now I'm looking like a goofy. I'm sitting here like this. And then you put my feet down, and then you say, can I bre give you the breathalyzer now? Because I passed those. You didn't want to say if I passed or failed, because wouldn't, I wouldn't have to do no more if I failed. So mm -hmm. now you're going to go get the other test. Now I already passed one of your dumb tests. Now I got to go pass another test. White people don't face this. So when you're looking at spraying white lives matter and all that, we already know your damn life matter. That's why we have to let you know ours matter too. Dude. We already understand your life matter. That's why I ain't no knee on your damn neck. This is why you don't have to run around in the street wondering what to say to the damn police when he pull you over. Because you don't have to worry about your life mattering. Your life is privileged. Unless you trail a trash. You dig? And some of them think they privileged. So this is what I'm trying to show you, America. We don't have the same understanding. We definitely don't have the same understanding. When we get pulled over by a police officer, we don't feel the same way. Right. So we don't need to be training our children to be cowards and cower down to a police officer. We need to train our children to look at the police officer like men and be men and say, what's going on, officer? Here's this and here's that, and I'm good. But know your rights. Know the law. Dictate know the law. back to them. Let know them know the you're clear on what the law is so that they won't have to try to misquote nothing to you. That's right. Know the when law, When you pull me over, you can't just say this and that in the third to me. Nah. And nah, we're not looking down and, oh, oh I just want to make it home. Well, he want to make it home, too. So we both want to make it home. Let's play fair. Mm -hmm. Let's play fair. We got families, too. That's we fine. trying to get home to our family too, officer. Be clear. Yeah, this is a uh, this stuff is This young man, so so mm -hmm. not to cut you off, but I was what I was saying is this young man saw what happened. We all saw what happened. And now this officer got me to the side 
and he's talked to me and talked to me and talked to me. But now he's trying to apprehend me, and the other officer already went through this with me and said everything was okay. So I'm feeling like something else might happen now, right? I don't know. I don't trust you. I think you might try to do something to me, officer. So I'm going to just try to get away. Because I told you, I could walk home. I don't have to drive the car. You can keep the keys. I told you my sister lived around the corner. I'll go to her house. I even told you I'll sit in the car and try to sleep it off. If that's cool with you, officer. If you thought I was going to flee, you told me to move my car. I could have fled. Right. But I didn't. And so why did I get two in the back? You shot three shots, though. I heard three, five, but two hit me in the back. Why do I have shots in my damn back? I just need to be clear on that. Why do I have shots in my back? And you want to know why we saying black lives matter? Because evidently you don't, you don't know that. Evidently you haven't figured it out. Mm. Did you think our lives matter when you called me one-fifth of a man? Did you think my life mattered when you hung me in a damn square and called it pick a nigga day? Did you think it mattered when you had sex with my wife in front of me? Did you think it mattered when you sold me and told me open my mouth to see was I a strong nigga? Did you think my life mattered then? Well, talk to your grandkids about what was happening and your great grandkids because they goofy and don't know. Hip them to why we think our life should matter. I know that's right. Okay, so we're going to move on because that, that subject really, really does rubs us the wrong way, as you can see. And, it's always going to rub me yeah, the wrong It always way. will, and I, I, I w I'm with you on that, baby. Spotlight Sports. Real quick, um, Spotlight Sports. Roger Goodell is sorry about how he handled the kneel down the situation. And Colin Kaepernick, he's a, ad, advising others in the league to take a look, another look at Colin and maybe um, give him a job. So, you ain't not wow, but an undercover. singing a new tune. Yeah, you ain't singing no new tune. You just found out and God twist your head. Yeah. The only thing is happening. You why you ain't been said that? Why? Right. If you felt this way, why did this man not have a job? Let's talk about Ed Reed, too. Don't talk about, don't leave the homie out, because he kneeled with you, yep. and you blackballed him, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so don't, don't leave him out. Yeah, Ed Reed was one of the other people that you won't give a job to. Why? Tell me why, Roger Goodell, if you feel so much compassion. Yeah, well. Yeah, you feel compassion, because y'all ain't shit. Right. <laughs> That's why you feel compassion. You trash. Fan got time you are today, trash. Y'all. <laughs> I got time for all y'all asses. Yes, indeed. Trust me. All right, well, um, before we move on, my husband wants to tell you about a little bit about Black Wall Street. and then we. Oh, yeah, speaking of all this, let me give y'all a light. Okay, so let me, let me explain something to you guys, America. It was something that was, I heard Fox the other day. Let me correct you, Fox. You made a statement that the largest massacre on the U.S. soil was some dumbass massacre. It had nothing to do with nothing, probably 20 people, right? You said, oh, that was the largest massacre. Let me explain with you guys what the largest massacre was on U.S. soil. We decided back in 1920, shout out to O.W. Gurley, we decided we was going to go buy a whole bunch of land down in Tulsa, right, Greenwood. We're going to get it popping. Because what had happened was black people was never able to buy in white communities at that time. We, could shop, we, could, we couldn't live or shop with you. We could only work for you. Mm. We could live and shop only in our own district. So by default, we had to keep the money in our community. Hear me out, Black Wall Street. We only could shop with us. We kept the money in our community. We built up a vast, vast, vast community. 600 businesses, churches, all kind of things, private planes, hospitals, all black owned. Hear me out. We wasn't struggling. We were killing it. We were millionaires. Look it up, Black Wall Street, look up the documentary. Let me be clear what happened. They bombed our community with the National Guards that they try to stick us on us, on us now. They kept, had U.S. planes on U.S. soil dropping bombs, yes they did, on U.S. soil, tore up the whole community, they looted, they raided our communities, they burned down every last business. Mm. 500 or more people were slaughtered. 6,000 people, black people, were put in concentration camps. I said concentration camps. The same thing you did to my Hebrew brothers, the Hispanics. The same thing you did to them. You did it to us then. And now, guess what? We weren't able to do anything after that because we were in camps. You wouldn't let us out until we had a work bracelet to say we're going to work for the white people. So you let us come back out, but then you said, we can't let these Negroes, well, you said niggas, we can't let these niggas get rich no more. So we now, we want them to come and shop with us now. Mm. You can buy with us, 
and you can and, and you can work for us, but you can't live amongst us. We don't like you like that. We just want your money. So listen to me. So they decided you can spend the money with us now. Ever since that damn day, you've been running out to other people's community, spending your money. Because you didn't want to leave it in your community, it wasn't good enough no more. You wanted to take it to other people's community. And we became poor, poor. So how do we change it? You spend with your people the same 1.3 trillion that we spent a year on Gucci, Prada, Fendi, Louis, and everything else. I said 1.3 trillion. Mm. So we make more money than all but eight countries combined. And we throw it all in the trash can. And we give it to everybody else and complain about how wealthy they are. You want to see wealth? Leave it in your community. PG County, you on the way there. You Black Wall Street, PG County. We, we keeping it in PG County. They don't like it, but we wealthy around here. A lot of money floating around in PG County. Every community have to keep the money to themselves. We need banks. We need industrial bank. There's a black bank here, be clear. We need banks. We need our own. Stand on your own. Come back to God. Stand on your own. That's Black Wall Street. It only got dismantled because we started shopping with them. We didn't want to keep the money in our community. If you want to be rich, buy black. Black dollars matter. If you want to know what matter, put the dollar where it belongs, and you don't have to boycott. You don't have to boy pick it, riot, or do nothing. All you have to do is control the dollar. I said 1.3 trillion. That's right. Count the numbers. That is See right. See if I told you a lie. You say, how do we have that much wealth? Well, we effing it off. We ain't buying up no, we buying liquor. We ain't buying a liquor store, we buying a liquor. We don't buy, the, we buy the club, we don't buy a club. We buy up the bottles for the club. 20 grand a night, dumb, dumb, that's dumb. If you wanna buy a club, take that 20 grand and start getting some stocks in that liquor. Do something smart with the money and then we are gonna transport it into the community. Don't think that your black brothers and sisters can't handle a dollar. We were the mathematicians. We were the scientists, we were the builders, we all that. If you erase the Negro from America, you have no America. Get back to it. Thank you so Black much. Black dollars that. matter. That's right, baby. Thank you so much for that, honey. And um, everything yeah, you said, I, I, came I stand to say that, that today. I, I came here to, that's my part of the show. I stamp yeah, everything he just said, so you all... We can leave now. We can ready to go. Get your, get your Black Wall Street lesson. Listen, we got to uh, go to a quick commercial break. We've got our first guest hanging on the line, Anthony Commodore, who is family to the show from Commodore Independent Film Works and Terrell Entertainment. Coming up next. Right uh, back. Spotlight over the city. Remember whose hands your life is in.
millions of people have been watching me on this incredible show and my management they, they wasn't calling as much no more watching him come in for what episode center and turn that into a whole two seasons that's that's the work of god man He was just so eager to talk to me. I just hear anything I want to tell him. Because I mean, it's like, you know, when you have dreams and ambition and you do what you got to do to see the food, you're looking like a man right there. We can see the sensitive side. It's about maturity. Push him a lot, and he takes it. Most actors can get very defensive. Just don't a uh, hardy hustle. You know what I mean? And make the decision of going to another city to make his family big and better. When you're consistent and persistent, you know it's gonna happen. But sometimes you meet extended family that you didn't know was family until you. That's kind of how I feel about Trey. Trey was somebody that I felt comfortable that I could go to and talk and discuss acting. We knew Trey had an older spirit, by the way. He acted. Um, it was very noticeable as he was coming up. I saw I was to walk away, and he pulled me back. So she didn't see any area that she could use him at that time, but when she saw his acting, she took on as an actor and immediately landed the role on the wire. And y'all haven't seen nothing yet. Welcome back to Spotlight. And man, we have an uh, amazing guest for you guys. As usual, we have up next Mr. Com Commodore, the filmmaker. Yes, we do. And um, we're going to introduce him shortly, but I'm going to shout some people out real quick on Facebook. Shout out to my whole Facebook gang, gang. First of all, Erica, mm. Ali. Uh, who else? My man Jeff Southside, what's up? Uh, Stink, what's up, Holmes? Southeast in the building, you already know. Uh, uh, who else? Mitch, Credo, Frank, what's up, Holmes? Dumasani, good to see you, brother. A lot of y'all, everybody on hey, Facebook, we definitely appreciate you guys so for rocking with us. And I see the comments. The I, and please share the show. I see the comments. Uh, Eric, he couldn't have let him walk to the, his sister's house. Oh, he could have. Yeah, exactly. Or... They could have been decent humans and drove him home for safety. Now, that's, that's right. definitely not going to happen. But, yeah, you're right. Back in the day when they were so-called officer friendly, that, that, that might have been a better chance, right? Yeah. So up next, we got Commodore. We don't want to leave you waiting any longer. That's right. Without further ado, we've got so our first guest. Do Yes, Mr. Anthony Commodore, Commodore is in the building, y'all. Give it up. There we go. Much better. I told you, you we could doing? see you. <laughs> hey. What's up, fam? Can you hear us? Yeah, I, we, I can hear you. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Good. I see you on the move. I see we caught you on the move. <laughs> I look, I had to, I pulled over so I could make sure I, there's like no distractions or anything. So we all good. good. It's all good, man. So let's talk about it. Who is Anthony Commodore? Tell the people a little bit about yourself. Uh, Anthony Commodore is a DC native, a proud Washingtonian. Raised in D.C., went to school in D.C., so um, every, everything about me is, uh, is D.C., although later in life we moved out of D.C., but everything about me is, uh, is, is D.C., and I represent very hard. Yeah, for sure, you do, and you DC do a, a great job at it. And so, wifey got some few questions she want to shoot to you. So, um, the news, the, the talk of the town is um, there has been a merge of two amazing uh, conglomerate companies Commodore Independent Filmworks did some sort of collab with Terrell Entertainment. Let's talk about that a little bit. Yeah, definitely. So, I'm, I'm sorry, can, can you say that one more time? I said, can we talk a little bit about how you, Commodore Independent Filmworks, has done a collab with Terrell Entertainment? Yes, absolutely. Um, we, we start off, as, as you know, as separate companies, and we started working together um, two years ago. 
And uh, after working together two years ago, through all the, the, the great, the good, the bad, up the down, uh, we had a, a pretty long meeting and we decided to merge our companies. Um, and it, and it, by merging our companies, we're able to help more people. Uh, we're able to give back to the community more. We're able to create more. We're able to put together so much more content. So uh, merging with Terrell Entertainment and Tuan Terrell, who's like, you know, my, my best partner, um, we were able we were able to get so much done and we're able to uh, open so many doors for uh, a lot of people. So the merger of the companies was um, was uh, well needed, well deserved. And uh, we have a lot to uh, we have a lot to give. We have a lot to do. We have a lot to create. And uh, we just uh, we, we just want to make this this city, our community proud of us. Um, so uh, and I'm very proud of uh, like I said, I'm proud of my partner who's uh, not on this this meeting with us now. But um we know we have some good stuff in store. Trust me. I Definitely. believe it. You know, uh, Miss uh, Tawana is one of my favorite people on earth. She is amazing. And um, both of you, uh, you know, stand and I adore both of you all and appreciate all of the work you all are doing and helping others as well. Um, let's talk a little bit about um, where things are with uproar. Um, you know, we, uh, we, we went and saw the premiere. What's going on with uproar? Well, right now, uh, and I'm going to tell you, this COVID, like, really pushed a lot of things back, but um, we did have our private screening of Uproar, and you guys were there. We, we greatly appreciate you all coming there. Uh, everyone had a good time, but Uproar right now is still uh, in New York City. The packaging was done. Uh, we just need to wait until everything has blown over so we can start meeting with uh, the individual we were supposed to have meet, met with, you know, back in February, so... Um, everything is kind of, you know, and, and not in the holding, but we're just kind of waiting just a little bit for things to open up, business to open up so we can kind of get right back to work because we would love to see uproar on one of these uh, major networks. Okay, sounds good. What else is going on? You were talking a little bit about some some opportunities in the film industry or, or it, were you speaking specifically to opportunities that may exist um, in your organization? Yeah, so what, what we're going to do, because, uh, you know, because of all this COVID, um, we were able to do a lot of creating. Um, you know, quarantine helped us a whole lot. Um, we were able to do a whole lot of, you know, we were able to create. We have a pretty good team, but we want to make sure, uh, especially, you know, in the D.C. area, because there's so much talent um, in D.C., we want to make sure we give people opportunities because there are a lot of creators out there um, who, could, who can definitely benefit uh, from what you know, what we have to offer, and we will definitely be looking out to, you know, the filmmakers, the writers, the director, the producers. We we're, we're looking to keep what we have in our own community, uh, to you know, to make it strong. Um, so you have the great filmmakers, you know, the the Mitch Cradle, the you know, the Randall Lawrence, the Crystal Gibson, the Howard Gibsons. Uh, you, you have so, you know the Mark Dixons. You have so many people out there, and not just. Filmmakers, we want to help people in their businesses, um, especially, you know, we plan on filming in D.C. We met with the D.C. film office and we want to make sure that whatever we do, we bring in vendors from D.C., like the D.C. based businesses. Um, so we want to make sure we give them a shot. We want to make sure, you know, we, we give volunteers a shot or someone who is even uh, who even has an internship. We want to make sure that we spread as much as we can to help our community while at the same time um, flourishing as a, as, a, uh, as a film company. So uh, there's a lot to do, but again, we want to make sure we take care of people. We're going to take care of ourselves. That's, that's, that's a given, but we have a lot of things to do. We have a lot of people to take care of. We have a whole community to take care, and that's what Commodore Independent Film Work and Terrell Entertainment is uh, committed to doing. Wow, and wow, wow. you guys are wow. doing an amazing job doing just that, too. We had a great time at the premiere, by the way. I'm so proud of the work that you all are doing, in, and it's very, very great that you all are trying to keep it in the black community, um, uh, Anthony. Yeah. I can't tell you how much that means, especially during times like what we're doing, going through now all together. For all of us to start doing things together is super, super important. So I appreciate you and Ms. Tawana for, for being those leaders out there doing that. Um, why don't you give our audience and our viewers some information about how they can, you know, keep up with what you all are doing? Do you all have a website? Do you all have social media? How? What's the best way for those that are listening and watching 
to start keeping up with what's going on with you all. And if they want to get involved, how can they do that? Um, you can get involved with us. Uh, we will give our email address is info at cindependentfilmworks.net. Uh, we answer our emails. We, you know, we don't leave anyone hanging. Anyone who emails us, we respond back to us. Uh, we respond back to you. So the best contact is the uh, info at cindependentfilmworks.net. Uh, and um, like I said, we, you know, we'll answer everyone's call. Um, and um, I mean, you know, people have a lot of things going on. Um, you know, people have a lot of a lot of projects going on. People need, um, you know, need some assistance. And we could be any assistance to anyone out there. Um, Cause I saw that um, the great Dr. Lavelle Long, and I'm gonna tell you, I, I, I'm so very proud of this brother. I mean, he's he, he he's really come through. And um, if you can't be proud of him, something's wrong with you. Um, that's a great brother. So I see that he's doing some great things. And if there's anything we can do to help anyone or to to assist in any way, we are totally available. We'll make ourselves available, uh, and that's what we have to do for one another. So. Yes. Feel free to email us. Um, some people have my number. Or some people could just, you know, hit me on Facebook or Messenger or Twitter at uh, Anthony Commodore um, okay. or at um, Twitter at, uh, at Commodore CIF. Um, and we'll definitely be able to help out. Absolutely. I really appreciate that. And yep. you guys are doing some amazing things, too, in the community and just for yourselves. So we appreciate you. And tell Miss Tawana that we love her as well. And we definitely appreciate her as well. Yes, we great do. Great character, real humble uh, people, and just great uh, uh, just all-around principles that you guys stand on. And we appreciate that. Yes, and I want to thank you again, Anthony, for being a part of our show, being a part of our Spotlight family. You and Miss Tawana always come through for us, and we um, love you guys. So and thank you guys you. support Spotlight over the city, yes. and we appreciate so all the support much. that you give us, you and Miss Tawana. Absolutely. So we appreciate you guys. And thank you, you all so much. You may, we love you guys. You guys are the absolute best, and we love what you're doing. We're loving the platform that you're allowing people to speak on. And thank you, thank you, thank you. So we, we greatly appreciate you guys. All right. Well, we Give can't wait well. to get the work out there, Anthony. So let's uh, keep us in the loop so yeah, we'll know. Yeah, let us know, man. Keep us informed. And you know we're a part of it. So just keep us informed. Absolutely. Thanks a lot. And see you guys. You take care. Great, great show, by the way. Thank, thank you, you so, thank so, you. You so, so much. Safe. And you be safe out there. You all give it up for Anthony Commodore, y'all. Woo! All right. Coming up after this next commercial break, we've got author... Kenyatta Gray. Yay. Coming right back at the spotlight. We'll be right back, spotlight. So just a heads up, this song is basically, you know, the, the idea behind this song is, you know, you ever been in a relationship, you, you know, once you get out of that relationship, you're trying to kind of find your way. And there's people that's trying to reach and grab you and say, hey, you know, come over here, you know, I love you, I love you, you know, just get the nerve, you know, your heart, and your heart of hearts. Love. 
these feelings I can't get up out of. I'm sorry if you feel some type of way. spotlight of the city and we have us a plus one in the building yes we do i we... love what i'm being rude <laughs> to him. i love my authors right and so i got a special place for authors as you all know i'm an author so i think it's a big deal so we have to give it up for her we're gonna have to yes clap it all the way up we me. gotta clap it all the way up so for she's this. a so let's get them she's accolades a three-time author not one or right two. not many? one or two she's a three-time author right and she's beautiful and amazing too we've got Kenyatta Gray, y'all. Give it up. Woo! Thank you no, so you're supposed much. to say author Kenyatta Gray. Author Kenyatta Gray. Yeah, don't leave off the author. <laughs> Welcome to the party. Thank you. I'm honored to be here with you two. Hey, girl. How are you? So can you hear us well? You can hear us good? Can she hear I us all? I'm sorry. I say, can you hear us pretty good? Yeah, right now I can hear you pretty good, yeah. Okay, okay we good. seem to be having a little bit of problem with the well, feedback, but we're going to keep it going. Yes, thank okay. you so much for being a part of our Spotlight family. We cannot wait to hear some snippets. you got to give us some of the tea of this amazing. You're a three-time author, but today we're going to specifically talk about your book, um, the, the, the late, which one, which one is the latest one? So the latest one is called From Section 8 to CEO, but the one that's re more relevant to Pride would be um, the second book, which is Passing as Straight. Okay, let's see. We, we had a few questions that came into our um, inbox about it. So what I would really? like for you to do is just kind of give a little synopsis about uh, the book Passing as Straight and give us your vision as to, you know, how it came about. Okay, sure. So... Passing It Straight is was literally a book that um, is based on my real life experience. And so one random day, I was sitting around thinking about just how far I've come from the days when I was ducking, dodging, hiding, trying to conceal my true sexuality. And so I thought, you know, hey, you know, I'm at a point now, I would love to write about it. And not only would I want to write about it, but I'd like to involve other women to share their stories of quote unquote passing as straight, um, who were uh, hiding their sexual identities. And I want to just clarify that passing as straight isn't about, um, it's not something that you do as an advantage. It's something that we did uh, that, you know, protected us. It kind of shielded us from being discriminated against, falling out of favor with people that may have uh, looked at our lifestyles differently. Um, discrimination, in some, in some cases, even being killed. So it's not something we do because we think it's slick and cool. It's really a protection mechanism. Wow, 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 wow. So, uh, okay, so let me just, let me reverse a little bit. I don't know um, if you remember, but we had about two or three shows ago, we had um, two ladies on here who had shared a similar story and um, just um, want to know, a lot of people who were asking in the inbox, you know, if you could give advice as to how they can can get the courage to come out sooner than, you know, like people go through so many years, Kenyatta, of living a lie, you know, and, you know, w what is it that gives people the courage to not do that and to take ownership of who they are and be proud of who they are? 
So it really is, number one, getting to the root cause of what's causing the fear. So if it, you know, if it's like as a result of like your religion or your upbringing, you have to somehow try to find a way to reconcile that. Um, if it's just simply fear of being discriminated against, or as you know, they just passed laws that, you know, you can't lose your job now for being in the LGBTQ community. Um, and it's just really just coming to a point where you're like, I'm tired of hiding, I'm tired of ducking and dodging, I want to live my best life. And for me, it was it was 100% because I found someone that was worthy of me to say, okay, I want to live my life with this person unapologetically. And so, you know, it depends on who you're in a relationship with. If, that, if you're feeling kind of, you know, like this isn't really the one, I'm not sure I want to come out, and you know, then that might be some issues there too. But for me, it was just, you know, having someone that was worthy that I wanted to spend the rest of my life with, the hell with what everybody thinks, I'm going to do what I need to do. That's what I call, you know, like taking ownership of your life. And, and like right. you just said, you know what? Your happiness is worth something, right? And you're determined to have that. By all means necessary, live your truth, right? And Amen. And, and, that's, and that's what makes me as a woman proud of uh, other women like you. I, I, I'm very, very proud of women, black, strong black women like yourself. Tell me something. When you, when you were writing this book, did you find that it was therapeutic for you? It was absolutely therapeutic because um, even though I had concealed my sexual identity at work from 2003 to 2017, so that's a long time. So the book was also my way of confirming whatever those secrets that you thought that I was hiding, you know. So it was like a coming out book. And it was also um, like a coming out book for the other five authors that submitted chapters for the book as well. Wow, wow, I imagine that. So um, do you have anything coming up? Like what's next for Kenyatta? Wow, so, you know, I could, uh, when I um, solicited for authors for this particular book, I received over 30 applications of women that wanted to participate in this book anthology. Wow. So that lets me know that there are more, and there are so many women that are dealing with the same issue. So there may be, a passing a straight volume two because I want to give other women an opportunity to share their stories. Um, because whether you read my story or five or the other five stories, there's something in those stories that are going to resonate with someone. So, um, in terms of that book, that might be what's coming next. I think you're yeah, on to something. I with like that. that a lot. I like that idea. I think you're on to something. I really do. Um, for for those that are interested, because we've got people now on our Facebook feed saying, "How can they get the book?" For those who want to purchase the book and those who want to support any of the, your other books that you have had, is there a, a play a central place where they can get your book? Yes, absolutely. So because they are watching your show, I set up a special discount, a ten percent discount. So if they go to my website, KenyattaGray.com, and so they'll see the book there. And if they enter the word pride, they will get a discount simply for participating in your show and learning about the book from you guys. Wow. That is perfect. I love that. I love the background, too. Your backdrop is lit. Yay. So before you go, Kenya, I want to ask you one thing. What would be your takeaway uh, that you would want to give people for reading uh, as a reader? What, 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 what is the one thing you want them to take away? Right. So everything I do now is all about the why, right? I think that when you know what you're doing, it's going to drive, it's going to give you the motivation, the encouragement, and the purpose to pursue your passion. And so for me, it's really just about defining why you want to do something. Why do you want to come out? Why do you want to read the book? Why do you want to be an author? Really understanding what's the driving before force behind what it is that you want to do next. Got you. Got you. Okay. So how can people um, just give out your information before we let you go? I want to give out your information and we're going to have you back. I've already talked to um, your PR person about some of your other amazing books that you've put out and some things that um, we also want to just air out on the show. So we're going to have Kenyatta back at a later date. For, for those of you who are watching the show now, um, tell them how they can follow you and um, stay in touch with you. Sure. So I am on Instagram. My author page is Kenyatta Gray, the author. 
at Kenyatta Gray, the author. And then my business page is Flights in Stilettos. Yay. Okay. <laughs> Yay. Okay, Miss Gray. Yes. Well, listen, it was such a pleasure finally getting you on the show and can't wait to have you back. You are considered part of our Spotlight family now, so you're, you can't get rid of us now. And our platform is here for you when you, when you need to push things out, you let us know. Thank you, and the pleasure was all mine. If you don't have a copy of the book, you will receive one ASAP. So thank you both very much. I need oh, that. Oh, thank you, and, and I appreciate your dedication because I know it's tough to uh, write a book. So it, it takes a lot of de dedication and hard work. Yeah. Who does to you? <laughs> thank you. Yeah, Girl we power. appreciate it. Yes, Let's give it. it up one more time. Give it up for, for Kenyatta. Kenyatta. Yo, we're going to keep going. We've got another Spotlight family member, the legend. We call it legendary. We have our legendary Spotlight family members who've been with us from, like, way back, right? And Marvelous Beats is coming up next after this commercial break, y'all. It's going to be lit. It's going to be lit. We'll be right back. Spotlight over the city.
Welcome back to Spotlight Over the City. And we have our last but not least no, guest. No, we got one, and, uh, two, two, oh, two we got more, two more guests. guests. Yes, Marvin, we have a yeah, one my closing out. Man, show. I thought it was 830. <laughs> All right, well, look, I thought Marvelous was closing out. Okay, nope. so we got our next guest. Marvelous Beats is in the building. And when I tell you this young man is everything, but, like, you've never seen this before, I'm pretty sure, because he's unique. He does something that I've never seen anybody else do. So without further ado, let's give it up for the one and only Marvelous Beats. Woo! <laughs> How's it going, everybody? Pleasure to be What's up, bro? Guys live. Hey! Pleasure to be on, on Spotlight on the City again. Yeah, yes. and, uh, we appreciate yeah, you. Yeah, ready to rock out for all the viewers, and hope you enjoy. Oh, most definitely. Let's rock. Hey, well, real quick, let's let's just do a real quick catch-up, uh, Marv. You know, um, we haven't had you on oh, the yeah, show yeah, in about it. a year and a half. I'm, I'm, I'm assuming you've been doing weddings and all kinds of stuff this past year. And during oh, this yeah. uh, quarantine... <laughs> I'm, I'm guessing you probably just been uh, trapped in the house a lot, but just give everybody an update on what's been going on with you. And um, y'all, look, I got. Remember this? You see this? Can you see this, Mark? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think one of the biggest diff uh, the biggest things that's happened in the last year is um, I became a father. So me and my girl, our girlfriend, yeah. welcomed our, our daughter into the world. Zen. Congrats. And she's gonna be half a year old uh, next week. So that's that's super exciting. Yay! <laughs> yeah, congratulations. Um, <laughs> thanks, thanks. And of course, you know, just, you know, like you said, I've been just really all over uh, the country <laughs> playing uh, weddings, um, recording with um, a majority, a wide variety of recording artists, both international and here in the U.S. And uh, of course, just producing records uh, as well. So as well wow. as not just playing the violin. Um, I also had the super cool um, experience. Uh, featuring in um, a BET movie, um, Angrily Ever After. I got to feature as myself, <laughs> which is pretty wow. cool. Yay. And um, yeah, I, I had a cameo in that movie. I was like super awesome. And um, yeah, let's see what else happens. Um, there's a lot of really notable performances in, on grand opening, stuff like that. So it's, it's almost so hard for me to remember because everything is uh, kind of a blur sometimes. <laughs> so, um, but I've been, I've been absolutely blessed. And, um, yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's just a beautiful um, it's a beautiful life right now. You know, regardless of everything going around, I, I definitely can't complain. Well, wow, that's a beautiful wow, thing. That's wow. a good thing. That's that a good is a thing, great man. thing. Congratulations once again on the newborn. That's yeah. Hey, she's super cute too. I saw her on your Instagram. She is adorable. She really is. She's so so cute. Thank you so much. Yeah. All right. Well, let's get right to it. We just wanted to get a recap of what's been going on in your life, and uh, we want our viewers and listeners, for those who don't know, let them find out how amazing you re your talent really is. <laughs> thanks, thanks. All right, let's get to it. So, um, yeah. the first record I'm going to play is Michael Jackson's uh, "Human Nature" song. So um, all, all of you viewers know, go ahead and uh, sing along. All right. Uh, really all right. quick, if you want to hear more, just uh, find me on marvbeats.com or on Instagram at Marvelous Beats. Did you That's say sing? Oh, okay. I'm ready. Oh. Thank <laughs> you. 
Sound over there. It hey, sounds man, it good. Sounded great. It was great. It was great. It was great. It, it was, was great. great. What it, was, it was so great that I want to know if you could do me a big old favor. I know this is off the cuff. I know my wife looking at me like I shouldn't do this because I'm, I'm taking up too much time. But I just want the crowd, I just want the audience, to, you to get them a smidgen of some hip hop trap or something <laughs> off the cuff so they can see the versatility. <laughs> the versatility. I want, I want them to see your work. Oh, he got definitely. some hip hop, Because I know how you rock for real, so I want you to give them some of that, put some stank <laughs> on it real okay. quick. Okay. Uh, let me see if I can pull up. I had a whole, like, you know, smooth R&B. Yeah, no, I, want, <laughs> I want some stank. Like, I want... I want funk. I wanted to. He wants some, I, I want trap, some trap music. music or some, yeah, yeah, you know. Some biggie. Okay. Yeah, I, I wanted to get stank a little bit. Let's see what I let's see what I see what I got for y'all. Yeah, you did um, see you want, something you quick. I, I know it's up because go like old school hip hop. What you feel? Even one you feel it. Whatever you feel, just whatever you feel. Whatever you feel. <laughs> whatever you feel. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, I got one for y'all. I got yeah, one for y'all. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
them to see it. I yes, knew. we I love knew. it, love it, love it. it. I knew you had it. Thank I knew you it. so much. I yes, was sir. out of my yes, seat. Hey. Hey. <laughs> yeah, I appreciate you. I, I, saw, I saw you jamming over there. <laughs> <laughs> we just want to thank you again, Marv, and, and let you know that anytime our platform can be of use for you, we want you to let us know. We're going to always say yes to you, and anything you're doing, let us know so we can continue to support your music and everything you're doing out there. For sure. We're very for proud sure. of you. Yeah, for sure. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. I will definitely be taking you up on that. Okay. <laughs> yeah, for sure, man. Okay, for sure. For sure. Here for, so, you fam. You know, You're a spotlight family. Yeah, for sure. For sure. It's a pleasure, man. We love your talent, and it's definitely a rare talent, and it's uh, something to be appreciated. Yes. So thanks again. Y'all give it up one more time for Marvelous B. <laughs> Woo! Thank y'all. Thank y'all. God bless. All right. Y'all have a good one. Yes. Thank you so much. Coming up after this quick commercial break, we are closing out the show with a singer, song, writer, producer, teacher, John Bibbs. Coming up next. Spotlight.
Spotlight. Spotlight. Spotlight over the city. Welcome to Spotlight over the city, and I'm here with the one and only, the big homie of all big homies, Mr. James Prince himself. What's going on, big homie? Oh, uh, yeah. What's up, D.C.? I put the spotlight on your city. The more voice of the, of the movie. I'm playing a old school cat that's in a wheelchair. So, so, so. Hallelujah. We got to get them first. So that's how I'm <laughs> Yeah. You got warrants in D.C.? I got warrants all over the place. I got warrants in six countries. I put the spotlight on your city. I put the spotlight on your city. See the superstar. Hollywood to Hollywood. Hollywood. Girl, you look good. Yeah, they holler, baby. baby. I'm the money on. I follow. What? In the E class. With the goggles. 96 models. Huh? Right, so we can't say. I can't say. The one and only God Lambert is in the building. I put the spotlight on Your spotlight over the city is on to something bigger than y'all think. I put the spotlight on your city. I put the spotlight on your city. See the superstars. Hollywood to Hollywood. Girl, you look good. Yeah, they holler, baby. What happened to that boy? 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 Backstage with the one and only Mr. Trey Chain. Give it up. And when you in the DMV, you rocking with spotlight over the city. I put the spotlight on your city. I put the spotlight on your city. See the superstar. Spotlight, spotlight, spotlight over the city. Welcome back to Spotlight Over the City, and we have our last but not least guest, and man, this one is going to be amazing because he's going to close us out with a special song that we talked about during the commercial break. I think you guys are going to really appreciate it. I know you all are going to really appreciate it. We have an amazing singer, songwriter, producer, a teacher, father, um, John, Dr. John Bibbs. You all give it up, please. Woo! Oh, thank y'all so much. I appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Yes. Welcome aboard. Welcome aboard. I see you got a full fledged studio. Yes. Yeah, man. I've, I've been working over the last uh, maybe a bit of a year trying to put my, my little studio set up together. Oh, yeah. I like it. Wonderful. Wonderful. Well, let's let's um, let our viewers and listeners get to know a little bit about who Dr. John Bibbs is before we get into your music. Tell them a little bit about who you are and a little bit about your background. Well, I'm... Uh, <laughs> Uh, I'm all kind of all over the place. Um, I operate in several different spheres. Um, I work as, as the lead administrator or head of school for Richmond Prep Academy, Richmond Prep Christian Academy. We are an independent uh, Christian school here in Virginia. We are the oldest African-American run independent school in the state. Wow. Um, I do that and I am a worship leader at uh, Remnant Church here in Richmond. I uh, am an independent recording artist, and I tour around the United States performing. And I'm very active on uh, several boards and commissions in my city. So I'm kind of all over the place. Wow. That's a good thing, though. That's a good thing. That's Busy's good. You're doing some amazing things. Uh, really great, great things. Um, tell us a little bit about some of the uh, artists that have been your favorites to to collab with or just to work with or just to learn with? Well, my, my vocal influences mostly uh, include, uh, again, all over the place. Um, I love um, uh, Marvin Gaye, of course. I love Nat King Cole. I love Prince, Bilal, D'Angelo. Um, heavily influenced by gospel quartet music, traditional gospel quartet music. So that's some of my favorite music as far as what influences my sound. Um, 
people that I love to work with. Um, there are a bunch of people in the DC metro area that are just phenomenal talents. And, um, Kenny Yay. Wesley, there's uh, uh, DeAndre Schaefer, also known as Dre King. There's uh, Trey Sorrells, a saxophone player. There's Deborah Bond. There's Imani Grace. There's, I mean, DC has so much talent. Um, and I, I think that most of my favorite people to collaborate with are in your city, in DC. Yay! That's a big deal. Shout out to the DMV. <laughs> of course. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, um, I don't want to take up too much more time with, uh, without letting our audience, because they've really been hanging on waiting for you, John. So we've got a lot of people waiting. Um, we've been hyping this up all week and excited to hear, hear your voice and some of the talent that you bring. Well, well thank you. I'm, I'm planning to sing a song tonight that um, I've not performed live before, so it's a little bit of nervous energy going on. <laughs> but this is a... Um, a song actually recorded back in the 70s by the Hollies. And it's about um, valuing each other as brothers and sisters and, and how we build a better society. So I guess I'll just play and sing that. Let's get it. Yeah, let's do it. Good. That's a good intro.
so much. I appreciate it. Wow. Great job. Great job. John, let me read you some of the comments that are coming in. Um, wow. Got a voice, Dr. Bibbs. Awesome. This Thank you. And someone else says, this song would go nice with all of the marches and essential workers' pictures of 2020 thus far. Nice yep. words, nice vocals, and nice melody. They're really, I'm saying some really great things that about that. That would be a good look, though. Yeah. Like to, to have uh, pictures of uh, people streaming. Yeah. What? Yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah. So, yeah, we um, might have to talk. Um, Doc, I'm going to have to call you about that, Doc. We're going to have to put something together. Again? I said, I'm going to have to call you about that. We're going to have to put something together using your song. Yeah, that's a good song, John. That all. Just give me a call. I'm down. Yeah, I like that. That's a beautiful song. That's a beautiful song, and we appreciate that so much. Um, we like to tell all of our guests, John, you're our first-time guest. You are considered now a part of our Spotlight family, so you can't well, get rid you. of us now. You're in the family. All right. Yes. I appreciate that. That means I'm invited to the cookout, right? Yes. Yep. <laughs> yes. Cookout's included. It come, it's a package deal. That's right. And uh, <laughs> yeah. when we're off of this quarantine and stay-at-home orders, we're hoping that you can come to the studio like we were originally planned and, and do something live inside of this amazing studio. Yeah, we have a great uh, studio. I'd so, love to. Okay. Perfect, perfect. Can you give out your information so that people can support you? If you've got music that you, you, you got out there, um, what? Give it all the information. Yeah, where Just can they give find the social media platforms? Yes. Well, the best ways to track me are online, of course. You know, all of the social media you can find me under John Bibbs. That's J O N B I B B S. No H. J O N B I B B S. And that's on Insta, that's Twitter, that's Facebook. Um, and as far as music, I do have a song that I recently released. It features Dwelle, and it's called Love Waiting. That's available wherever. Uh, music, you you stream music or purchase music online. Again, the name of the song is Love and Waiting. It's John Bibbs featuring Dwelle. So go listen to that. Wow. Perfect. I Perfect. like that. I like that. So I appreciate you once again, and we will be in touch because we really do want to talk to you about using your song. So um, that's a, that's another thing. But we got to get out of here, you guys. We got to get ready to wrap it up. It's time to close, right? Yeah, it is time to close. But before, we, before we close, I just wanted to add two things. Um, Spotlight over the city. We we uh, pride ourselves in supporting black businesses throughout this these traumatic times. And today we chose our guys over there at Kitchen Cray in Lanham. So hey, guys over there at Kitchen Cray, the food Man, was amazing. The food is amazing at Kitchen Cray. We love I it. I had the there was some big chunks of crab meat and um, shrimp and What's this some Alfredo. What's the stuff they be having over there? Because I know had, you know the whole mean. They they have so much stuff, y'all. They've got the best. Uh, they got, they got crab. They uh, always they got have like cr uh, crab grits. Is it crab grits? It's like crab grits, shrimp and grits. They got all kinds uh, of seafood lobster dishes. And grits, so bomb. This is everything. They, yeah. they, the, the shrimp, the French toast is amazing over there. So anyway, shout out to Kitchen Cray. Kitchen Cray. And then I wanted to say happy early Father's Day to all of the fathers, especially to yes. my amazing husband, Thank to you, my sweetheart. amazing dad, and all of the uh, fathers out there, the fathers of my children, all of the dads out there. I'm just saying happy. Early Father's Day, you all don't get enough recognition, and I recognize great men, so I wanted to say that myself. Well, we appreciate that, and I'm going to say as well, Happy Father's Day. I didn't even know it was Father's Day. So happy Father's Day to all the dads that's out there doing some uh, amazing things with the children, even the single dads. There's some single dads that's raising uh, children on their own, so salute to you guys. Yep. Uh, I appreciate you as uh, fathers. And we got to get out of here, you guys. So we, we want you guys to make sure you uh, lock and load with us every week. Go to our YouTube channel and uh, subscribe. Subscribe. Subscribe, y'all. Subscribe. Yeah. We need just your uh, subscriptions. We want people to link in with us. Make sure you follow us on Facebook. Make Spotlight Over the City. Make sure you follow oh. us on IG, Spotlight Over the City. What else? One more thing. I have to do this, I promise. You all see that T bomb. I've never I've been I've been almost 50 years and never wore braids. My niece, Sonny, she's 11 years old. Shout she out to did Sonny. my Love braids. Her. Shout out to you, Sonny. If you need your braids done, y'all got to get at me, and I'll hook you up with my niece, Sonny. Thank and you. I love yes. you. Yes, and Sonny's amazing. She does everything. So if you need a meal, she can cook it. If you need a song, <laughs> she can write it. If you want her to sing it, she can do it. If she you can want play her to the perform, piano, she will do it. And this is no joke. 11 years old. She has her own production company, Sunny D Productions. All of those things are real. That's welcome to the family. And so I want to say if you uh, love the word of God and you want to talk about God in a real, real way and you don't want to be religious, but you want to be spiritual, then come on over and check me out on The Cool Word every Wednesday at 7 p.m. on Facebook. Yes. Go look at The Cool Word, The 
cool word. Just go Facebook. like that page right and now, y'all. Like that page as well. Make sure you check us out on Facebook, Spotlight Over the City, IG, Spotlight Over the City. We got to get out of here. And we always like to wrap it up by saying, love hard, live good. God first, Spotlight Over the City.